All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Will of the Many by James Islington, or Islington. I don't know how you pronounce that last name. It's um, right there, at the bottom. Now, this book was also published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. I got an early copy sent to me by my editor at Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Uh, so I thank him for that. Uh, I really looked forward to reading this and uh, just read it over the weekend. <clears throat> my review will probably be coming out about a week before the actual release date of the book. So um, there's that. Now let's talk about um, the cover first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustrations. So let's go over this one. Um, Saga Press, they, they typically do just really elegant, graceful, and beautiful covers. And I think this one is all of the above. And if this was a John Grisham or Scott Turow legal thriller, it would be spot on. It's just, you know, it looks to me like a, a, a John Grisham legal thriller cover. Um, this is an epic, high epic fantasy novel. High fantasy, epic fantasy. With a little bit of dash of science fiction thrown in. So the cover, um, I don't know if the cover necessarily says that, though it is a really dope looking cover. Um, I love the Romanesque designs in the background. Um, the font is big and bold. Uh, the name of the author is a little bit scrunched down at the bottom, but it just overall, it's a sharp looking book on the shelf and Saga Press always does super sharp looking books. They've also got a wonderfully, a wonderfully done color map on the inside of it. It's just an overall good looking book. And I will tell you, have you ever opened a book and, and you know, the scent of the pages, this, this, the ink and the paper, I don't know what type of ink or paper they used, but I could be, uh, become addicted just smelling this book. That's, I mean, that's a whole other story. Anyway, what is the book about? Okay, so James Islington, Islington, is known for the Lycanus trilogy. Um, that trilogy, I think I read the first four or five chapters of the very first book in that trilogy like 10 years ago, or maybe it was eight, six, seven years ago when it first came out. Don't remember a whole lot about it. Um, so I'm pretty much going into this book not being a reader of this particular author. So this is really the first full-length novel of his that I've read. Um, and I was majorly, majorly delightfully and surprisingly impressed by what I read here. I absolutely loved this book and everything in it for a lot of different reasons because I can compare it to a lot of different authors that I love, and I, we will get into that in a minute. So, overall, this is a Romanesque high fantasy novel with dashes of science fiction in it, and it just kind of reminds me a little bit of maybe uh, Red Rising, um, Christopher Rocchio's The Sun Eater series, and uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it reminds me quite a bit of Steven Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fall, and, and I'm going to kind of get into a lot of that here. Um, so, it starts out with a character named Vis. In fact, the entire book is told through first person, through Vis's, and it's V-I-S, his point of view. He's 17 year olds. His real name isn't this. This is kind of, he's, he's in disguise a little bit. His real name is Diego and he's from the realm of Sus. Now he's been kind of sent and planted. We don't exactly know uh, right off the bat why he is in this other realm, kind of under this disguise, under this fake persona. But he's immediately kind of like a prison guard slash gladiator slash, um, 
living in an orphanage. Almost the orphanage almost reminded me of the Cider House Rules by John Irving, where there's all these orphans that are wanting to get adopted. And when some of them get adopted, the other ones are jealous and this, that. And then he's also kind of got this side job. This has a side job in this prison. And um, then he's also a gladiator and... Uh, He's kind of like paid to throw uh, the match, and he doesn't. It's kind of uh, reminded me of Pulp Fiction in a way, where the Bruce Willis character was supposed to take a dive, and uh, you know, and but then things go bad. There's a lot of stuff happening, and the author doesn't really he places us in this world that's got massive world building. His world building skills are incredibly good. However, he does that thing where the Malazan Book of the Fallen with Steven Erickson is, where he, he throws words at you and he throws situations at you without really explaining to you what it is. You just kind of have to figure it out as you go. Um, it feels like you're dropped into things mid-story, like we don't really know why he is... Um, in disguise in this other area and what he's after we kind of have to figure it out as we go we um and, and and different terms and words that we've never heard before are just kind of used in everyday speech and we as the reader the the, the people in the story know what it means but we as the reader kind of have to figure that out now there is a glossary at the back so if you do come across words that you don't know what they mean and um, you can go to the glossary and it will just tell you, well, this is the transport. Like they, like they were talking about transepts and will and all of this stuff. And, you know, you go back and you'll see that the transepts is a, a mode of transportation, sort of a sci-fi-esque mode of transportation through this sort of high fantasy land. Um, and this is kind of like almost when Christopher Rocchio with the Sun Eater series said that he writes science fantasy this is kind of what this is too, but this would be more fantasy science. Fa this would be what Christopher Rocchio's Sun Eater series is more science fiction with fantasy elements. This one is more fantasy with science fiction elements. And um, it works well. The world building is vast in scope and a little bit confusing, a little bit disorienting at first, but that's kind of part of the mystery. And when I talk about you being thrust into the story sort of mid plot i mean i really do believe that there's a reason that the author has chosen this device because you know most stories like this because it actually turns out that this is kind of like a harry potter-esque wizard school training book all of in its own with just its own unique twist much like the name of the wind you know where quoth has to go and train this character also ends up in a training school which is uh one of those tropes that's getting overused but this book takes it in a direction that I've never seen or never expected. Well, Red Rising was that way too. And um, that's why I keep comparing it to all these different things, but yet it's its own unique entity. Um, and it's got its own kind of thing. The magic system itself, I should get into before we talk about plot and stuff, the magic system itself reminded me a lot, a lot of my good friend Dave Farland's Rune Lord series. So if you've read this and you know about sort of how the kings and queens could take attributes from their citizens, which would enhance their magical powers, and but it would diminish the magical powers of the peasants, but enhance the magical abilities of the kings and queens. It's kind of a similar thing where, where, where sort of people can, and it's called seed, S-E-D-E, -E, they can sort of seed over their um, will to um, empower another person. And there's even a list, there's like a, even a hierarchy of, at the beginning, there's even a hierarchy of kind of how powerful a person can get depending on how many people like contribute to his um, powers by kind of giving up their own. Um, we've got Octavus level, Septembus level, Sextus level, Quintus level, you know, from eight people to 500 people to 1600 people. I mean, you can, you can literally get a ton of people to give up their powers for years and you can become quite a powerful person. And a lot of the society itself is built from the will. Like it's almost like all of these buildings and stuff and, and, and floating machinery and different things that are in this intricate world 
have been constructed because a lot of people have given away their kind of their own power to others so that other people could do great things. I'd probably to all of that up, but I think you get the point. Um, so our main guy of this is, is in disguise in a city that he's never been in and he's 17 years old, but he's got some goals and purposes that we don't know about. We don't know what happened before then. Um, it seems to me like a story like this, normally you would start it when he was a young boy and we learn how he got to this point. But no, we're dropped into the middle of the story, in the middle of the action, in the middle of the plot, I feel. Like, I was kind of like, well, I'd kind of like to know what happened when he was known as Diego as a little boy and what led up to this, to where he's at now. Because that seems like it would be a really interesting story. And I have a feeling that there's a reason why we start where we start. And I'm trusting the author to take us into the places where we do find out what happened back then. I have rambled on and on, but this is a great book, and I want to give it justice. So I'm just going to read the um, the jacket copy because that does the best job of describing the book. Um, so, at the elite Catanan Academy, a young fugitive uncovers layered mysteries and world-changing secrets in this new fantasy series by the international best-selling author of the Lycanus Trilogies. Anyway, the Catanan Republic, the hierarchy, may rule the world now, but they do not know everything. I tell them my name is this. I tell them I was orphaned after a tragic accident three years ago, and that good fortune alone has led me has led to my acceptance into their most prestigious school. I tell them that once I graduate, I will gladly join the rest of civilized society and allow my strength, my drive, and my focus, what they call the will, to be leached away and added to the power of those above me, as millions already do, as all must eventually do. I tell them that I belong, and they believe me. But the, truth, but the truth is that I have been sent to the academy to find answers, to solve a murder, to search for an ancient weapon, to uncover secrets that may tear the Republic apart, and that I will never, ever cede my will to the empire that executed my family. To survive, though, I will still have to rise through the Academy's ranks, I will have to smile and make friends and pretend to be one of them and win. Because if I cannot, then those who want to control me, who know my real name, will no longer have any use for me. And if the hierarchy founds out, finds out who I truly am, they will kill me. And that is the mystery of this whole book. It is why is he under this ruse? Why is he going through all this trouble? Um... And how do we as readers figure it out and sift through all of it amongst all the layers of world building and plot and action and set pieces that are going on and swirling on around us? All at the same time, in this book that is wonderfully written, it's just one of those books that kind of takes your breath away with, oh my gosh, this guy really, this author really swung for a home run and hit the ball out of the park. You know, I mean, this is some complex stuff that the author has pulled off with great twists and turns at the end and great mysteries set up. And I can't wait to see what happens. I am going to give The Will of the Way a 9.5 out of 10. It is a very good book. Enthusiastically say that anybody that likes any of the books that I've mentioned, Red Rising, Name of the Wind, the Sun Eater series, Mala's on Book of the Fallen, even my good friend Dave Farland's Rune Lords. If you like any of that kind of stuff, this is a mashup of all of that with a unique twist all of its own. It's just really, 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 really good.